he was also a paratrooper, which enabled him to fall more slowly. <laughs> less accurately. <laughs> but now he is a family man who goes to church every Sunday and Mecca once a year. <laughs> he's original, he's bold, he's outspoken. He is possibly the most disgust, some say the most disgusting Scottish comedian <laughs> since John Knox. He is here. He is Billy Connolly. <laughs> I must say, I love these little therapy sessions. <laughs> <laughs> you leave a different person. <laughs> Just to put you at your ease. Do you, or have you at any time, watched or watched David's nature films? Oh, yeah, yeah, for many, many years. <laughs> since, oh, really? I mean, <laughs> since way, way back, mm. way in the, uh, the Bali one and oh. the Komodo dragon and all that. And I was totally obsessed by that kind of program when I was younger. The, the natural programs and the Grove family, mm. you know, remember the Grove family? Well, mm. and uh, I used to love it, especially the Komodo dragon one, mm. up a tree filming mm. this thing. But there was also Armand and Michaela Dennis, wasn't there? And Hans and Lottie Haas. <gasps> and per, per Host was that yeah, his name? That's right. Mm. The, he was, was he the woodpecker person? No, that was Heinz Seelman. Heinz Seelman with the woodpeckers. Yeah. There was all these extraordinary people. And they were kind of naive in a way, weren't they? Let's say, they were always jumping up and down with the mass eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the time, you know. Michaela Dennis didn't know she breast, you see, she was jumping up. <laughs> it's all these people leaping up. And we were sitting in Glasgow going, terrific, you know. <laughs> And it was weird to be sitting in Glasgow watching these, but I, I always loved every second of it. I did anything about the Villas Boas brothers. And I used to go into work or into school and talk about it. People thought I was off my head. Jacques Cousteau, anything. I used to love it. What was your favourite, uh, what was your favourite animal on David's programmes? My favourite animal on David's was the Komodo dragon, but my favourite animal in the world is an Australian animal called a hairy-nosed wombat. <laughs> I think, and I, I heard the name first, and, and then I sought out the animal. <laughs> and it's brilliant. It's like a big mouse. It's just a big, hairy, happy mouse. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's just like a huge, big mouse. And, and it sort of digs holes. And I, was, I met a guy in Australia, he said, oh, we used to have one. He said, they're, they're awful. <laughs> And he told me why it was awful. I thought it endeared me to the animal well, forever. He said, it, they dig holes in your garden. He said, and that's okay. It'll dig under the fence to get into the next garden. He said, but it won't come back through the same hole. <laughs> it to dig another one. And I thought, that'll do me. That, that sounds like me, you know. It, David, I, I, my favourite moment in all your programmes was when you were uh, deep in a cave in Borneo. And there was a mound of, of, of bat excrement. Oh, I remember that. It was, uh, it was a 60 foot high conical mound of bat excrement. And you were standing in it up to the waist with cockroaches crawling all over you. Yes. And you looked as happy as the queen at the races. <laughs> is, and I want to ask you, I always want to ask you, is there any animal that disgusts you? Yeah, I, 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 I don't care for rats, I have to say. Um, I, I've had rats run over my face while I'm sleeping, and I, I think that that can be so avoided. So have I. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't, you, you, don't you agree? That's not yes, too good. Yes, I've hung out with some dirty people in that. <laughs> I know, you must have been to the same party. <laughs> <laughs> just a plan of ours to bring you back together. <laughs> Come sell a black. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what I... <laughs> I, I, I need I to, I need to just, work it out of hand. <laughs> I used to like... Of course I loved those, those nature programs and television, and still do. Love it. And especially envy the way you travel. In your series, you could be in the middle of the Congo and say, but in the Grand Canyon, <laughs> <"Shtum."> <laughs> That is my dream, you see. But, <laughs> you, know, you know the difference between the British ones, which in my opinion are superb, and the American ones, you know, and, and French are good too, Jacques Cousteau and all that. But the, the Americans put an edge on, on these animal films that I don't like. 
Like, you know, you, you with, with a gorilla, say, you're going, he's just, he's just around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> if I just edge over. <laughs> These things looking at me. <laughs> right. And this thing's going, do I tear his head off or do I, do I eat this leaf? <laughs> right, and that, that holds me spellbound. But in the American ones, they tend to get a film star maybe, or a famous person who, who doesn't really know the subject, it's obviously, and they, and they make it kind of Hollywoody, and I don't like it, and they say, and here comes the shark now, and boy, is he hungry! <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I, I don't like that, you know. Yeah. You're, just back from, you're just back from Australia, and uh, you've, been, you've been around the world too, eh? Australia, New Zealand. Yes. Does travel, does travel broaden your mind? Nope. <laughs> it does many things. It itches the crutch. <laughs> it itches the crutch. My crutch gets unbearably itchy. Because <laughs> I travel in aeroplanes and all that, get all sweaty, and it's. <laughs> It's the only part of the body that sweats on a plane. Isn't it extraordinary? <laughs> <laughs> it goes to town, it makes up for all the other. <laughs> and there's something intriguing about being over an ocean you've never been over before, or many times you've never seen it. You know. And there's a woman you never met before telling you how to put on a life jacket <laughs> over your head. And you know she's talking about the moment before you're going to die, right? <laughs> what she's describing is this tons of metal heading for this ocean. <laughs> and in the unlikely event that you get out, you're going to have to be wearing this thing. <laughs> and she says, put it over your head and then take the tapes <laughs> and pass them twice round your body <laughs> and tie a double bow. <laughs> And you're thinking, this thing's going, Wah! and all the engines are in fire. And you're saying, how'd you do a double board? <laughs> we, uh, we once had to do a fly in, in one of these uh, comets, so they call the Vomit Comet, which is just, uh, <laughs> that sort of thing. And we were up in the stratosphere. And we had these very uh, cool Americans who said, now, if you have to uh, uh, jump out of the aircraft, they said, uh, don't pull the parachute too soon, because you're so high up, you'll freeze to death. <laughs> said, just, just wait and count to 60. <laughs> he said, but if suddenly... He said, cold water creeping up your leg meets warm water trickling down the thigh. You've left it too late. <laughs> See, that, that's all what traveling is to me. It's, it's, some, it's a, a moment of insanity between your own house and somebody else's house. These people telling you terribly unlikely things. Yeah. You know, in the unlikely event that we have to land in water, now, you wear this yellow jacket and blow it up and there's a whistle and a torch. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm supposed to believe this. <laughs> that I'll be bobbing about in the ocean with my wee... <laughs> I hope, I, I hope I'm eating my luggage. <laughs> I'm freezing. And then she goes. <laughs> and the distance you hear. <laughs> she swim up. See, nobody's told you about, about the Atlantic whistling shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was brilliant. Hey, but, uh, how, how do you stay? I mean, here's here Billy and I. We both want to know, how do you stay so fit? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not fit. Of course you are. I am absolutely well, not. Look at you, you're no. immortal. <laughs> how, how, how do you do? But what is your exercise program? What I don't do it? anything. You don't? No, certainly not. Certainly not. You wouldn't catch me doing any of these. Amazing you do. Things. You you go up and down the Grand Canyon and all that stuff. Uh, well, yes, but I mean, I also walk to the station. But, but I mean, I don't sort of <laughs> jog. I don't jog or anything, or do anything extreme. You don't even do that. No. Some of us are fighting fighting our weight all the time, you know. Well, I'm fighting my weight in the sense that I know that I'm fatter than I should be. I, I do 30 sit-ups. I mean, the, do you? <laughs> Every week. I'm reducing from sort of eight bars of chocolate tonight to mm. six, you know. That's yeah, I, I think you're just lucky. What about you, Billy? I say, cool. I go out on my bike. It's a thing. It's a strange thing. I. It was one of the indulgences of of my adult life. When I was uh, in my early teens, I fancied being a racing cyclist, and I had a real shabby bike. And uh, I didn't make it because I wasn't good enough, basically. But I. I was always out there on on my bike, and I thought if I ever make a lot of money, I'm going to buy a real cracker. And. A couple of years ago, I did. I bought a real beauty, and I've renewed it ever since, and I, I have got this great joy in cycling now. I like to go fishing, but cycling is where I get going round Richmond Park there in my gear, I'm a fancy. I've got all the gear, you see, a real <laughs> poser cyclist, you know, all these <laughs> French words that could be swearing for all of <laughs> As I go zapping round Richmond Park, there's deer, look at me like that. <laughs> deer, I've got a great sort of upper-class way of looking at you, yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're obviously saying, well, why doesn't this guy eat trees? Like everybody? <laughs> Where's he going? Does he know what a tasty trees are? <laughs> the question is, how do you cope with wealth and fame? <laughs> Who are they? I have never been wealthy, ever. I, I am reasonably... If you're skint, I'm wealthier than you. <laughs> but, but I'm not a wealthy... Wealth and fame is a severe pain, actually. You know, the, the assumption of wealth, that people think, God, you must be worth a million, you, and they spit in your car. It's... it's <laughs> they do, they do spit in your car. You know, yeah. <laughs> You get, a weird, you get a weird view of the world, you know, every, people say and then they go... <laughs> pass, and some of them go... <laughs> in, in some cultures, it's a mark of respect. Some of them go... Who was it? Roy Hanlon. Mm. He's a Scottish actor, told me. Roy Hanlon, he, he came off a train. This might interest you in the body thing. The, he, he came off a train at Glasgow Central Station and he was feeling good to be back in Glasgow. He got off onto the platform and he was walking down. You know that feeling you get in your hometown? It just feels good. He's coming down the platform and a guy was walking towards him, went like that, and Roy went like that, and the fellow went... <laughs> <laughs> What was what was the first what was the first thing you bought with any real money you ever earned? What was your first car? Thought? Yeah, yeah, it was a I, and I didn't have a license. <laughs> I bought a Citroen Safari, you know the one that looked like a shark, the pointed, <laughs> yeah. 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 and it was a bronze one, and I didn't have a license, so I wasn't allowed to drive it. So I used to go outside and sit in it and do. <laughs> I listen to the radio. Did you have a jag at one stage? I have. I've, I've had a few jags and I did like them. And uh, I now have a Range Rover. It's terribly... It's, I don't know what it is. I bought it for the tour and I can't give it back now. I was going to sell it, but I kind of like being up high. In the, the, I, I've got no passion for cars. I'm not a car person, you know. There's no car that I've ever always wanted. I had a Rolls Royce once, not a mine. I, I borrowed it for a week from my manager, actually. And, uh, <laughs> and I was driving around in it, and it was okay for a minute or two, but people don't like them, yeah. you know, other people. Yeah. But, and people are disappointed when they see me in it. Yeah. You go, oh, oh come on! <laughs> What are you doing in that thing? <laughs> right, probably the best car in the world. Where's your street cred, Bob and Groovy? <laughs> oh, I borrowed it. You know, you'd start apologising. Oh, I'm sorry. The people on Zebra Crossings, excuse me, I just borrowed this. <laughs> I, 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 saw, I 
saw you giving me a funny look that you went. <laughs> Only bothered that. Why, oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's odd, isn't it? And I've never wanted a low one. I've got a, an E-type Jaguar once, a red one. And uh, I saw it in the garage. It was one of the boldest things I ever did. I was in an ice car. I was in a, a, a golf, a, one of those wee open-top golf, and I swapped it straight for this one. I said, can I have that car? They said, yeah. Ch -ch -ch. And on the Monday I had it, it was mine, I owned it, and it was an E-type, a red soft top. And it's got one terrible failing. When you go above 60, you can't hear the radio. <laughs> You know, and I like all that gardener's question time. <laughs> right, you go above six, you can't hear a damn thing, you put it up and blade it. And then, but people in sort of allegros with purple faces go, <laughs> you, know, you do 60, you know, trundling along, and this thing comes rattling around. Come on! And they've got names, they, they've, they've always got names, these cars. Come on, Angus, you can do it! <laughs> Bits falling off. Come on, my beauty! You can beat this bastard! He's in the break. He's in the... Hey, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> That's my boy. Steam and smoke, you know. <laughs> Correct it. You, you, it's funny, they bring out weird things, don't they, in people, these cars? It's like sunshine coaches. I've, I've never seen one with anybody in it. <laughs> There's always somebody going somewhere. Oh, he must be going to get somebody to put in it. You know, it's just it's one of these odd things at the transport. But I, I just, I, I get them on whims cars. I'm not a great car person. I'm not one of those A to B people, you know. As long as it gets me from A to B. I do quite enjoy them, but I'm not a, a buff. You know, I should get a straight Land Rover, you know, the black and white. I haven't got a car at all. You, you don't? don't? Have you got any status symbols at all? You must, you must have, uh, what's a delicate way of putting it? Those books have done very well, haven't they? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do you do with all the bread? Right? <laughs> it's carried around, it's, it's a dancer. By and large, we rep I mean, what, what we did was actually repair the house that we lived in yeah. for a long time, which was had a leaking roof, and we sort of sorted that out. The way things are arranged, you really can't get rich from book royalties, can you? The government takes its... Uh, you pay your tax. That's right. Yeah, yeah. you really... I don't want us to burst no, I was going to say, we could go behind and sob together quietly, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, wait a minute, I've worked this out. I'm the one who gets all the letters now for the Inland Revenue. You've both claimed poverty. I'm, <laughs> I'm the rich and famous one. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. So, I heard you digging the ditch. Yeah. <laughs> People do tend to think if you've had a best-selling book, then suddenly you've got enough money to retire, and it's just not so. It's... Do you know what gets me sometimes? The pools win. Do you remember a pools win used to be seventy-five thousand pounds? Yeah. And those people said, "Well, that's me. I've retired. Yeah, never work again." Yeah. I wonder. I wonder. But you must go. You must go barmy, mustn't you? I mean, if you're sort of winning the pools when you're say thirty-five or something, if you didn't do anything, you have to do something, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, you go on writing your books. You go on doing these. Oh. What, television what? programs, although we all know you're a multimillionaire yeah, yeah. and don't need it. <laughs> but you do it because you like meeting all these interesting people. Well, Wogan goes on working. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot more that we can say, and maybe we can adjourn to the bar and say some of that. <laughs> but we run out of actual airtime, so for now, I'm reluctantly, I have to say thank you very much, Billy Connolly. Thank you very much. David Attenborough. <laughs> <laughs> like being in studio with a whirlwind. <laughs>